Now at 9, some Southwest Missouri community members mourn the loss of a loved member. Plus, how Missouri Southern is trying to improve student engagement with today's spring career fair. Plus, the FAA is trying to figure out why planes almost keep colliding at airports across the country. Lauren Blanchard in Washington, what we learned from the experts about the challenges the aviation industry faces. The four states most watched news starts now. Thank you all for joining us tonight. I'm Jalen Banks. Authorities capture the final two suspects from a shooting in Newton County this month. Authorities today arrested Trevor Palmer and Kimber Laquette in Texas for the March 4th shooting of James Hodges. Hodges was shot twice in the car on Carver Road, but survived. He identified three suspects who he says had been in another car. The third suspect, Cody Jones, was arrested shortly after the shooting. All are charged with first degree assault, first armed criminal action, and second degree assault. And now we move to weather. Meteorologist Sam Lane joins us. And thank you very much. It's been a beautiful day across the area. Lots of sunshine and temperature. We made it up to 65 today after starting out at 38. The normals are 60 and 37. Of course, the records back in 2012 of 81 and 16 and 88. Satellite view shows those clouds spilling across our area. No precipitation with them right now, but that's going to be changing as we head into tomorrow's forecast as we're watching a big storm system over Arizona. That's moving towards the east and that will start to impact our area as we go through the afternoon and evening hours. And you can see the rain chance are dramatically increasing tomorrow afternoon. Basically, everyone's going to get some rain. It's just a matter of when in the afternoon. We're going to see temperatures falling through the 50s. And then as we go through the early morning hours, temperatures are going to be rising again. It's going to be windy, too, with a low of 51 degrees. And looking ahead, we have wind advisory in effect until Friday morning, thunderstorms tomorrow, and then maybe even a few flakes tomorrow night. We'll talk about that as well as turning colder on Friday. We'll have all the details in just a little bit. All right, see that. Four staters mourn the loss of a longtime and beloved community leader. KOM John Nahadala talked with community members about their beloved Gary Stubblefield and Mr. Carl Junction. He is, you know, quote unquote, the community's best friend. We had them make Gary one huge pancake. Community members remember Gary Stubblefield, former president of the Carl Junction Area Chamber of Commerce. Residents describe Stubblefield as a person with inspiring ideas. He even called Kevin S. Studevin to apply for his former role. Gary taught me um, how to serve, how to love the community, how to uh, care, to give, you know, to give yourself every single day and, you know, and to give yourself 150%. Sutterman says Stubblefield promoted small businesses, built the Chamber of Commerce building, developed scholarships. He was seen everywhere, especially when supporting a community member's Hope for Your Breast Cancer Foundation. A lot of people referred to us as because we both were so busy with the community. Him as Mr. Carl Junction and me as Mrs. Carl Junction. Three years in a row, Carl Junction Post Office was number one in the nation for selling the most breast cancer stamps. Sharon Clark remembers how she made her goal selling stamps. I went around to these individuals, gave them the pink pie in the face and thanked them for supporting. And all of a sudden, Gary comes up with a pink pie in my face. Of course, he got one too. Clark and Studevin wish to carry the memory of being Gary and be kind. Even if you never met him or you just saw him on TV or you just met him, he instantly made you feel like you were the best, you know, best friends in the entire world. And it's because he cared and he listened. Hashtag be a Gary that's went viral on Facebook. And that's it. That is it's very simple, lasting legacy that it takes a community um, to fill that hole that we're all feeling with him gone. And so, um, you know, it's striving to be a Gary. In Carl Junction, Yanna Haudala, KOAM News. Our thoughts and prayers are certainly with everybody that loved and cared for him. Subblefield Celebration of Life will be this Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Carl Junction Middle School Auditorium. Missouri Southern is giving students a chance to look forward to the future. The university today hosted its spring career fair. Area employers were asked to bring trade show style displays to give students a good understanding of what their businesses do and what they stand for. Officials say the interactive booths improve engagement from students. It's been a good experience for me. I didn't really, like I had to come here for a class, 
and um, so I didn't really expect much out of it, but I actually think I might have found a summer job to go to. MSSU last week hosted a Dress to Impress event where students could get professional donated clothing ahead of the career fair. Local organizations and businesses met in Vernon County, Missouri to share services and information. The goal is, is to create a resource guide for the county. Businesses shared a roundtable discussion and it also provided the chance to network. I normally reach out and I just talk to businesses and organizations. I share it with the chamber and our local Facebook page so you know that it's about to happen because it's not open to the public. To learn more about what the Nevada and Vernon County area has to offer, go to KOMnewsnow.com. After at least six major incidents at U.S. airports this year, the Federal Aviation Administration is hosting a safety summit today. As they began discussing among industry leaders on how to improve safety for everyone on the ground and in the skies. Fox News correspondent Lauren Blanchard is in Washington with more. A video simulation shows a close call last month in Austin, Texas, when a FedEx cargo plane almost landed on the same runway that a Southwest passenger jet was waiting to take off. Also last month in New Jersey, a United plane clipped another plane's wing on the tarmac. And in January, a computer glitch caused the first nationwide ground stop since 9-11. Basically, what in the heck is going on out there? After multiple close calls this year alone, just outside Washington, D.C., where there was another near miss last week between planes at Reagan National Airport, the Transportation Secretary met with industry leaders at an air safety summit. Aviation has to be about safety first and moving people and goods within that safety first framework. Increasing the strain on the system, the surge in travelers since the pandemic, plus a wave of new employees at the airlines. Change um, and fresh faces uh, are not new for regional aviation. The group has promised to continue discussions on how to improve safety as quickly as possible, but the head of the National Transportation Safety Board says just talking isn't enough. The NTSB has issued seven recommendations on runway collisions that have not been acted upon. One is 23 years old and still appropriate today. How many times are we going to have, have to issue the same recommendations? over and over and over again. The aviation leader said Congress needs to increase funding for their industry in order to help modernize it and keep up with demand. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. The U.S. says it will continue to fly missions near Ukraine, even after a Russian jet calls the U.S. drone to crash. The U.S. often flies drones over the Black Sea as it monitors the fighting in Ukraine. Russia's ambassador was summoned to the State Department to answer for the actions, but he says Russia did not cause the crash and said the drone was flying dangerously close to Russian-controlled territory. Coming up, staying on track with your retirement plan. A record number of Americans are tapping into their 401ks. I'm Garrett Tinney in Chicago. I'll have more on this story coming up. Mint Mobile, partially owned by actor Ryan Reynolds, is being acquired by T-Mobile for over $1.3 billion. I'm incredibly proud and grateful, Reynolds said after the deal on Twitter. He reportedly owns a 25% stake in Mint. Mint Mobile founders Rajwan Kasem and David Glickman are going to stay on board after the deal is done and Reynolds, Reynolds will remain on his creative role. The buyout is slated to close later this year. T-Mobile has turned into the U.S.'s biggest cell phone service provider after, being, after buying out rival Sprint in 2020. Inflation at the wholesale level before it gets to consumers declined last month. The producer price index on fe for February was down one-tenth of a percent. For the year ending in February, prices rose 4.6%. That increase was weaker than expected and is another sign of inflation cooling. With so many Americans facing hardships because of inflation and a shaky economy, some are turning to their retirement funds early. Experts, however, say taking out any amount of money before its time will only hurt you in the end. Fox News correspondent Garrett Tenney has more on this story. The statistics all look pretty grim. 
that in general the amount that people have saved for retirement. Cash-strapped Americans are raiding their retirement funds prematurely. According to data from Voya, people without enough savings are 13 times more likely to choose this option despite the potential tax penalties for early withdrawals. The rise has financial experts sounding the alarm. Do not cash that thing out. Cashing out should be the absolute last resort in the most extreme circumstances. According to Fidelity and Vanguard, withdrawals rose to nearly 2.5% last year. That's up from 1.9% in 2021. A record number of those cash removals were hardship withdrawals to help with emergencies like medical care or possible evictions. But it's not just those in need who are dipping in. Professors at the University of Colorado Boulder studied about 162,000 people leaving their jobs over a three-year period and found at least 40% of them took some, if not all, of the money out instead of rolling it over into a new plan. It's basically like you've been working for this some company for, in our data, on average 6.6 .6 years. You've been contributing, your employer's been contributing, and now you're back at square zero. No other part of the world allows you to cash, cash out when you're, when you're leaving a job. If you're changing jobs, experts suggest you transfer the money from your retirement fund into your new employer's plan or into an IRA. In Chicago, I'm Garrett Tenney, Fox News. A discount retailer will pause the sale of a food staple. Dollar Tree has stopped selling eggs in its stores. The move comes as the staple food has skyrocketed and cost by as much as 60% during the fall. The discount chain has around 8,000 Dollar Tree stores across the U.S. and Canada. A company spokesperson said it does not anticipate Dollar Tree will bring eggs back into the stores until the fall. Eggs are big sellers ahead of the Easter and Passover spring holidays. The Buffalo Wild Wings just admitted that their boneless wings are not actual chicken wings. Shocker. This comes as the chain is currently being sued for false advertising. The lawsuit alleges that the company has overpriced boneless wings, even though they're just chicken nuggets. In a tweet posted on Monday, Buffalo Wild Wings admitted to the allegations in a sarcastic manner. They said, It's true. Our boneless wings are all white meat chicken. Our hamburgers contain no ham. Our buffalo wings are 0% buffalo. And Sam is back with a complete look at the forecast and later. A federal judge in Texas could decide the future of access to abortion pills. Well, we've had a pretty nice day across the four states. It was a little bit on the breezy and windy side, but uh, that's ahead of the next storm system. That's starting to move in right now. It's Seneca, Missouri at Indico Sky Casino and Resort. Pretty nice evening shaping up across the area. It is still a little bit breezy out there. Temperatures are very pleasant though, generally in the 50s, still at this hour with those southeast winds bringing up the moisture. 57 in Fort Scott right now, 53 in Iola, 58 degrees down in Venita. Right now in Joplin, you can see on our tower cam, things looking pretty nice. It's double nickel right now, south southeast wind at 16. And of course it feels like 55 degrees with the dew point of 33. So the humidity is still low at 43% and the pressure is currently falling. Winds are gonna be out of the south pretty much all night and we're seeing wind speeds right now around 10 to 15 miles per hour. But as we go through the day tomorrow, we're going to see these winds dramatically increase out of the south. Could see gusts over 40 miles per hour approaching 50 in the morning. And then as we head through the afternoon, those winds are going to continue ahead of a cold front that will start to move in from the north and west. And after the front passes, we're still going to be breezy with winds out of the northwest at around 30 to 35 miles per hour. Satellite view shows just some clouds over us right now. No precipitation associated with this right now. But we are watching the storm system organizing out across the high plains more cloudiness out there but here's the big storm system producing severe thunderstorm warnings believe it or not in arizona earlier this evening that is the system that is going to be kicking out into the plains tomorrow and yes that brings the risk of some thunderstorms your seven to seven forecast looks like this temperatures pretty much in the 50s all night into the morning hours into the afternoon you can see the rain chances dramatically increasing as we head into the afternoon and breaking it down for you, you can see those southeasterly winds tonight. A few spotty showers might be possible, especially out towards the west with lows in the 50s. Then as we go through the morning, more showers will start to develop. But by 2 o'clock, we'll start to see a line of thunderstorms off to our west. And that will start to march eastward and could become severe, especially down to the south with temperatures in the 50s. And then watch as the front passes by, temperatures dramatically drop into the 30s with a mixture and even some snow 
flying, especially across our northern areas, with temperatures in the 30s by tomorrow night. So it's going to be dramatically colder. And then as we go into Friday afternoon, it's going to be pretty chilly out there with winds out of the northwest and highs only in the 40s. And then as we go into Saturday morning, we'll see lows in the 20s once again on northerly winds. The severe risk tomorrow is going to be down to the south in north Texas and southern Oklahoma. Could see an isolated severe storm in our area, but not really likely. The risks are low, and as we go through the rainfall, that's the big story. We're going to be seeing quite a bit of rain, especially in southeastern Kansas where they need it. Some areas could pick up an inch or more, and that's certainly welcome news. Let's take a look at the next seven days. Thunderstorms tomorrow with a high of 61. St. Patrick's Day, it's not going to feel like St. Patrick's Day with a temperature of only 46. And then the first day of spring, not feeling very spring-like with a high of only 53, but at least it'll be dry. And then as we head towards the latter part of next week, we'll finally get close to 70, but then another round of storms on Thursday. Yeah, as for today, I had to, I had to heat up the night before, but then I had to turn it down <laughs> this morning because it was super hot. I was like, yeah. man, where did this You're come gonna from? You're going to need the heater again tomorrow evening. All right, I'll, I'll be sure to like set it up. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sam. Uh -huh. Coming up, the Community Clinic of Southwest Missouri celebrates 30 years of service to the community. Exposure to the chemical tree chloral ethylene is associated with the 500% increased risk of Parkinson's disease. That's according to a team of international researchers publishing in the Journal of Parkinson's Disease. The chemical is widely used to decaffeinate coffee, decrease metal, and dry clean clothes. Researchers say the runoff from those from those procedures contaminates up to one third of groundwater in the U.S. The Community Clinic of Southwest Missouri is celebrating its 30th anniversary. KOAM's Amber Jenkins spoke to the health professionals about how they impacted the community for the last 30 years. The Community Clinic in Joplin does more than just provide affordable health care. The clinic functions because of the community's involvement. Uh, we work with our, our patients to make sure that they are able to be active community members. Um, most of our patients are the working poor. They, they make too much money from Missouri Medicaid and they can't afford marketplace insurance. For 30 years, Community <laughs> Clinic focused on helping people who might fall between the cracks of the health care system. We are the only free and, and charitable clinic in a 150 mile radius, so we really do serve a, a huge need in, this, in the Southwest Missouri area. Southwest Missouri has a dire need for accessible community clinics, a need that dates back for over 30 years. We are the only free and, and charitable clinic in a 150 mile radius, so we really do serve a, a huge need in, this, in the Southwest Missouri area. This anniversary gives the workers a chance to remember a time when they were a patient before the clinic was established. 30 years ago, I guess when they started back in the church, I used to be a patient there. Well, here, but I wasn't here then. Juanita was once a patient, but now she discharges patients with a smile. It has impacted the community so much. I have family members that come over here, lots of friends that come here, and just new friends that I make. Reporting in Joplin, Amber Jenkins, KOM News. And just in case you're wondering, the community clinic in Joplin is accepting new volunteers. Up next, for more than 30 years, Labrador Retrievers were the most popular dog breed in America. Not anymore though, we'll tell you who the new top dog is. The U.S. has a new favorite dog after more than 30 years. With their bat-like ears and wrinkly noses, French Bulldogs are now the top dogs in the country. According to the American Kennel Club's 2022 registration statistics, the cute and compact French Bulldog now sits on the number one spot. It's the first time in 31 years the Labrador Retriever has been unseated as the most popular dog breed in the country. In 2021, Frenchies held the number two spot behind the popular labs, but now are ahead of the Golden Retriever. 30 more minutes of news, weather and sports coming your way. How a new program in Joplin is connecting senior citizens with volunteer opportunities. Plus, turmoil on Wall Street after shares of one of Europe's biggest banks drops. That's prompting banking fears. I'm Connell McShane. Full details are coming up. A Joplin organization is helping retirees find their perfect match. Participants will be f are falling in love with the new volunteer opportunities. KOM Shagun Bomdali has more. 
United Way of Southwest Missouri and Southeast Kansas is partnering with the Area Agency on Aging to create the Give 5 program. It is a five-day course for seniors and retirees. They meet with 23 area nonprofits um, and look and find out what opportunities they have for volunteerism, um, what might be a good fit for them, um, whether that be using their skill set from when they worked or maybe they want to do something completely different. This program can help senior citizens get out more. So the number one health risk to senior citizens is isolation. And so through this program, we hope to take those retirees, those, those senior citizens, take them through this class and get them out of the house. Volunteers told me they love the program. Oh, really impressed with it. They're organized and have good leaders. Uh, so we're making a good tour and, and all, all the uh, facilities here. So far, they've been excellent. Uh, the, the people that are presenting the different ideas to us are we're, we're learning so much from them about things that, different opportunities that we can use to, that they, we're learning where they need us and where we might actually fit in with our skills. So it's very, very productive. The Give 5 program is completely free and all adults from ages 55 and above are eligible to join. Reporting in Joplin, Shagumbam Dele, KOM News. Seniors who want to participate can still sign up you can find more information at koamnewsnow.com. A Joplin-based fly fishing group is giving people a lesson on one of the toughest parts of the hobby, tying lures. Mako Fly Fishers hosts the Fly Tying Club event at the Reddings Mill Fire Department. It's not, it's not all the group does. They also host fly fishing outings, environmental projects, and kids events. Basically, just tying material on hooks, just, you know, different patterns, different things. Some are for, like, for Roan River, for, for trout. Some are for our, warm, like, for um, Shoal Creek, warmer water species. When you go fishing, you want to catch that perfect fish. On, like, a fly rod, that trout is a perfect fish to me. The group hosts the fly tying events every third Wednesday of the month. They also host group meetings every first Wednesday of the month. Both are held at the Reddings Mill Fire Department. The first major railroad merger in more than two decades will go forward. Federal regulators approved Canadian Pacific's $31 billion acquisition of Kansas City Southern. The two are the smallest among the nation's seven major railroads, but their coupling will create the only railroad linking Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. It took two years for the U.S. Surface Transportation Board to approve the acquisition. Novo Nordisk announcing it's cutting the U.S. prices of several insulin products by up to 75%. The Danish pharmaceutical company confirming Tuesday the price changes will go into effect January 1st, 2024. Some of the products include Novo Nordisk's pre-filled pins and vials of long and short acting insulins. Banking fears spread across global markets went today after shares of Switzerland's second largest bank tumbled more than 20%. Fox Business correspondent Connell McShane has more. The problem is the bond market. And my prediction, you know, I called uh, Lehman Brothers years ago. And uh, I think the next bank to go is Credit Suisse. Growing fears on Wall Street, this prediction could come true after shares of Credit Suisse plunged on Wednesday. Shares tumbling after the bank's largest investor, the Saudi National Bank, announced it would no longer buy more shares due to regulatory limits. This prompted a sell-off that at one point saw Credit Suisse losing more than a quarter of its value, which eventually led to a pause in trading in the Swiss market. The drop sent shares of other European banks tumbling, some by double digits. Credit Suisse wants, is going to fail. Let it fail. I mean, my whole point is we should have let Silicon Valley Bank fail, Signature Bank fail. The banking crisis comes just days after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank here in the United States. Both banks were shut down over the weekend with the federal government unveiling a plan that protected depositors. The turmoil has prompted some lawmakers on Capitol Hill to call for tougher banking regulations. We're reaping the consequences of lighter regulation. When Chair Powell started leading the deregulatory movement in the Federal Reserve 
and getting the regulators to lighten up, the consequence is problems get missed. Uh, the oversight becomes lighter. Senator Elizabeth Warren and other top Democrats are also pushing for the Justice Department and the SEC to open an investigation into the failure at Silicon Valley Bank. In New York, I'm Connell McShane, Fox Business. A bit later, the next generation of AI. It's being called artificial intelligence on steroids. I'm Lydia Hu with Fox Business. Coming up, OpenAI's newest product, ChatGPT4, breaking technical boundaries and raising ethical concerns. Well, we had a warm and windy Wednesday across the area, and that's going to make for some thunderstorms on Thursday. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. But right now, let's enjoy the side, nice evening. A little bit on the breezy side, though, in Seneca, Missouri, at Indigo Sky Casino and Resort, but no rainfall as of yet. But that's going to be changing. As we look over the last 36 hours, we had temperatures in the 50s yesterday. Then we dipped down into the 30s this morning, but we did make it up into the lower 60s this afternoon. In fact, we're about 10 to 15 degrees warmer tonight than we were 24 hours ago across the area, so at least we're on the positive side. In Joplin, we're sitting at 55 degrees. Notice the wind out of the southeast at 16. Dew point is 33, but that's going to be climbing as we go through the nighttime hours, 43% on the humidity. Temperatures across the area are still in the 50s at this hour, 55 in Yates Center, 58 in Neotache, same thing in Sedan, 51 down in Benville, the coolest reading, Cassville, with 49 degrees on the hour. Winds are going to be continuing overnight. And as we go through the morning, we're going to see these winds gusting up to 40, maybe even 50 miles per hour in some isolated spots. Then as the front moves in from the north and west, we're going to see those winds continue. Then once the front moves through, the winds are going to switch direction. And they're still going to be breezy, but from a different direction out of the northwest and bringing some much colder air as well. Satellite view shows just a few clouds over us right now. That's going to continue through the overnight hours with no precipitation as of yet. We're watching a storm system organizing over the western parts of our region, but the big storm system is still over Arizona. That's going to move to the east, and as it does so, we're going to see the rain chances dramatically increase as we go through the afternoon hours. In fact, here's a look at your 7 to 7. We're looking at temperatures in the 50s overnight into most of the day, and we'll top out in the lower 60s, upper 50s with scattered showers and storms, but then the temperature starts dropping like a rock tomorrow night. Rain chances, they're going to be dramatically increasing as we go through the afternoon hours, basically reaching around 85% by 4 o'clock. Breaking it down for you, we're going to see temperatures in the 50s tonight with isolated showers, mainly off towards the west. Then as we go through the afternoon, notice here comes the storms along that front, and as it does, it'll move right through the area around 5 o'clock is when we think the storms will be moving into southwestern parts of Missouri. Some of those could be strong or severe, and then that system moves out and then we have maybe a little bit of snow tomorrow evening, especially up towards the north in Fort Scott and in Nevada with temperatures in the 30s with a brisk northwest wind. It's going to feel more like winter out there. That continues into your Friday afternoon with highs only in the 40s with a breezy northwest wind. And then as we go into Saturday morning, temperatures in the 20s with those northerly winds. Severe risk tomorrow, biggest down in Texas and southern Oklahoma. Isolated storm here might get severe. We'll continue to keep an eye on that for you. Rainfall is going to be plenty, though, across southeastern Kansas, where some places could pick up an inch or more, and that's just where they need it as the drought is still hanging on. How about the next seven days? Well, here's your forecast. Tomorrow, 70% chance of storms. Some of those could be strong or heavy, a high of 61. Then St. Patrick's Day, dramatically colder, only 46 for the high, and it stays cool right on through the weekend. Spring arrives on Monday, but not feeling much like spring with a high of 53. We finally get into the 70s by next week, and then we start to cool down once again behind that storm system. So a little bit of an up and down roller coaster. But it makes your, your job interesting. So it sure does. I guess we'll take it just for yeah, that's the, right. the sake of the show. Tomorrow. All right, sounds good. Thank you, uh -huh. Sam. Spring, as we all know, is fast approaching, and trees are starting to bloom, but that's not always a good thing. The Missouri Conservation Department is offering free replacements, but only if you cut down your Bradford pear tree. Nicolette Zagara has details on the renewed campaign to control the invasive species. It has a multitude of issues, um, so it is uh, almost an invasive species at this point, and it grows so fast that it chokes out the light for your native trees um, and ends up overtaking the whole native uh, ecosystem. 
Kevin Grabowski at Wickman's Nursery knows all about Bradford pears. Back in the 1950s and 60s, the trees were imported from China. The promise of a fast-growing, beautifully blooming tree came with a slew of issues. They have a very fast growth rate, um, and for people that are just starting out with trees, that can be very desirable. Unfortunately, the faster the growth rate, the weaker the tree. Um, so as they get big, as they have more mass to the top of the tree, a strong wind can just split the tree right down the middle, uh, which can be very costly in terms of removal, um, repair, things of that nature. That's why the Missouri Department of Conservation is offering an exchange. You have to register ahead of time, prove to them you cut down the tree or trees with a photo. But keep in mind, no matter how many trees you remove, only one tree is given in exchange per household. Also, you can only cut down your Bradford pear. Don't cut them on public property or on someone else's land without their permission. While registering, you'll be able to pick out the tree you'd like to plant if supplies last. Your choices are river birch, buttonbush, fir oak, fringe tree, or swamp white. Coming up, a court case that could have major implications. A Texas judge decides the fate of a major abortion pill in the U.S. I'm Mather Rivera in Washington with more on that case coming up. A Texas judge heard more than four hours of oral arguments from both sides of the abortion pill issue. Some 40 million women could be impacted nationwide. Fox News correspondent Madeline Rivera reports from Washington. Since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last year, the latest court battle is over abortion pills. A federal judge in Texas appointed by former President Donald Trump could force the drug Mifepristone off the market nationwide. The evidence is there that this is a safe drug. It's part of a two-pill regimen responsible for over half of abortions in the U.S. The Food and Drug Administration approved Mifepristone over two decades ago, but a coalition of pro-life groups are suing asking them to rescind approval. The FDA has one job, which is to protect Americans from dangerous drugs. And the FDA did not do any safety testing on the chemical abortion drugs before allowing them onto the market. The judge could issue a temporary injunction, stopping sales of the medication until the lawsuit is settled. Abortion does not need to be legislated by a court, by a single judge who doesn't have expertise in this matter. Critics say cutting access to these pills will drive up surgical abortions. The Biden administration is bracing for all possible outcomes. The decision could be unprecedented, of course, uh, and devastating to women's health. And we may find ourselves in uncharted territory uh, once again. Major retailers have been thrust into this debate. Walgreens already says they will not sell abortion pills in certain Republican states that have threatened legal action. In Washington, Mather Rivera, Fox News. Back with more after this. It's called being AI on steroids. OpenAI's newest software, GPT-4, is exhibiting a human-like performance, breaking the technical boundaries and raising ethical concerns. Fox Business correspondent Lydia Hu has the details. OpenAI says ChatGPT4 improves upon the prior version with enhanced writing capabilities, additional document analysis, and the ability to analyze images. For example, ChatGPT4 is shown this photo of a smartphone and lightning cable. It's asked, what's funny about this photo? The software writes, quote, the humor in this image comes from the absurdity of plugging in a large, outdated VGA connector into a small, modern smartphone charging port. Another improvement is a feature called steerability. The user can tell ChatGPT to respond in the Socratic style, so it never gives a student the answer, but instead asks the right question to guide and help think through a problem. But ChatGPT4 has its limitations too. OpenAI admits it is not fully reliable. It hallucinates facts and makes errors in reasoning, but the company says the intelligence is improved. GPT-4 is 82% less likely to respond to requests for disallowed content and 40% more likely to produce factual responses than its previous version. ChatGPT4 is available only to paying users of ChatGPT Plus or to developers for now. Reporting from New York, Lydia Hu, 
Fox Business. TikTok could leave its Chinese-based parent company if it cannot reach an agreement with the U.S. A report from Bloomberg says a sale or initial public offering could be in the works if the company's proposal with national security officials gets rejected. Lawmakers have voiced concerns about the Chinese government's potential to access American data from the app. Coming up, how a Nebraska boy born with a rare heart condition got his dream made into reality. An Omaha, Nebraska boy born with only half of his heart got a surprise visit from a superhero. He's okay now after nearly a decade of fighting. So the Make-A-Wish Foundation wanted to give him a gift for his fight. Reporter Bella Caracta was there and has a super surprise. I was surprised that his favorite superhero was right in front of him, Captain America. I didn't know that this was going to happen. Make-A-Wish came to Prairie Lane Elementary. Josiah is has the biggest heart of any kid I've ever met. Uh, he's more than deserving of everything that he has coming this way. Josiah's wish was a meal with a superhero, and he was specific about the menu. Cheez-Its on a silver platter. And then he's going to be off to Disney World uh, and having fun with his family. His mom was 23 weeks pregnant when they got the diagnosis. Yeah, this feels... This feels amazing. I can count multiple days where we didn't think that we would be here. To be able to experience this Disney trip as a family is such a gift that we get to do together and celebrate life as a family and Josiah's life. And I thought it was only my class at first, but when I looked around, there was a bunch of family and the other class was here and it surprised me because I didn't know there was going to be so much people. Because of his heart condition, Josiah can't do contact sports. Surgery remapped the blood flow from his heart, sometimes making him a bit more tired than others. But he loves reading, music, and movies, especially superhero ones. I don't know about Marvel, but I think that's in Universal. And when I do go there, I'm going to be real excited. Just as he was today, excited with his friends and family at Prairie Lane Elementary. Oh man, that's awesome. And that's our time for tonight. Thank you all so much for joining us. But before you go, we'll leave you with the video of pandas at a zoo in China. Be safe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. See you then.